Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you, and glad to be back with you uh, tonight for another study of God's Word. I heard uh, part of What Does the Bible Say with Mark as I walked in, and uh, I think we may be uh, covering some of the same ground, but that's all right. Uh, as uh, Brother John Shannon said, uh, you know, you may sing the same song uh, a few times, uh, you know, every, every Sunday or something like that, and you don't get mad at the song leader, so... If you hear the same scripture, same sermon, uh, something like the same sermon, you shouldn't get mad at it because it's still studying God's Word. We want to encourage you to uh, come out and study God's Word with us. We meet at 250 the Boulevard there in Eden, uh, North Carolina, 276-340-2653, or you can reach me at wordmelord at gmail.com. We'll be glad to come out and have a Bible study with you or, or uh, discuss with you on, uh, by email or however you want to do it. We'd be glad to to be of service to you in any way. Our Bible study is on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. right now. Uh, Brother Johnny is uh, uh, teaching uh, Romans. We're going through Romans. I don't know how long that's going to, to last. We discussed uh, uh, tonight. He may be changing some time uh, in uh, uh, Rocky Mount. And so we hope that you will, uh, we'll let you know how that works. But in the meantime, we want you to come out and study the God's Word with us there at the boulevard on Thursday nights. And then, of course, Sundays we meet at 9 o'clock for Bible study and 10 o'clock for worship. So we hope that you will come out and, and be with us there. If you're in the Martinsville area or the Danville area, 823 Starling Avenue is where the brethren meet uh, there. Uh, there's Johnny's number, 276-806-2150, or uh, Micah's number is 434-429-5221. Uh, and uh, Mark is meeting at, uh, uh, he's, he's preaching there at 120 American Legion in Danville. And uh, he, he gave you his number. His number's up there, but we can't see it, but that's all right. <clears throat> and uh, we hope that you will uh, uh, go out and, and visit with those brethren anytime you get a chance. I, I know they'd be glad to see you. Friends, want to uh, say something, uh, really, I guess, we'll start off with this little picture behind me, you know, uh, winter wonderland, a snow scene. Now, we haven't seen much snow this year. I don't think, I guess, none yet, really, this year. We didn't see much last year, and and we may or may not see snow, but you know one thing about uh, walking through the snow, or if you if you ever had a chance to walk through the woods or something, it's real nice and quiet. And and uh, uh, I don't know why our camera keeps going out of focus, uh, but uh, uh, there's something kind of uh, serene and magical about a, a winter wonderland. And uh, but you know if you've ever walked through the woods or walked through a snowy a meadow, pasture, or whatever, when the cloud is uh, covering the sun, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a whole lot different uh, feeling than if you're walking through the snow with the sun shining on it. When there's a bright light uh, shining on snow, it can actually blind you and it can produce something like a, a snow blindness. And that's really what we're, what we're going to talk about tonight. We want to talk about being blinded by such a great light that you that you really don't know where you're going. You know, this, the sun comes so bright and so shining that it's almost you just can't make out images. It can be so bright. And it can actually produce something called snow blindness where individuals uh, have their, their, their eyes burned, almost like looking at a, uh, 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 someone who's welding, an arc welder. It's known by a num number of names, but snow blindness can, it, it makes the, uh, pupils uh, constrict so much that sometimes you can't see. It burns your eye, uh, eye the, the corneas in your eyes, and so forth. It's, it's painful. And so, but a lot of people uh, have what I want to call snow blindness when it comes to religion. Now, what do I mean by snow blindness? When I talk about snow blindness when it comes to religion, I mean the snow, the blindness when it comes to what they know. It's the blindness where they can't see the truth. That's what I'm talking about, snow blindness, being blinded from the knowledge of God's Word. Now, I want, I want you, to, as we go through this lesson, to see if maybe 
you have some of these same symptoms. Maybe it may be that you're diagnosed, you diagnose yourself, you know, people go to WebMD and, and they get online and they type in all their symptoms and they say, oh, you know, I've got uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, the bubonic plague, I don't know. You know, they come up with all the symptoms, but as we're going through the symptoms in your spiritual life, I want you to ask yourself, you know, maybe I, maybe I have some snow blindness here. And I, my job is to help you open your eyes. That's what my job is. In Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians 1 and verse 18, I want you to notice what Paul says here. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, he says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So our job is to open the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of, the, of his inheritance in the saints. So our, what we're trying to do, friends, is we're trying to help you to, to open your eyes, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now, uh, I don't know, Richard, can we fix this? That, that camera's kind of going uh, candy whomper on us, going crazy on us. I don't know if uh, maybe I guess the scripture's staying in focus. That's all that really matters. So let's just talk about snow blindness here. What does it mean? What are we talking about when we're talking about being blinded by the snow, blinded from, uh, from knowledge, or blinded from the truth. Listen to what Jesus is going to say. In John chapter 8 and verse 32, John 8 and verse 32, Jesus <clears throat> says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, wh what is he saying about that? Let's just look at the context. In John 8 and verse 32, Jesus is talking to a group of individuals who, uh, who are arguing, basically they're, they're saying that they deserve to be righteous because of their lineage. And they are really blinded to the truth that Jesus is teaching because of their, their history, because of their, their ancestry. And that's what he's dealing with. Now notice this. In John 8 and verse 32, you shall know the truth, you shall, the truth shall make you free. But back up, let's back up one verse to verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now look at verse 33. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Now, let's stop and think about that. Let me just show you how blind some people can be. They were saying we're Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any man. Now, I don't know if they were talking about themselves uh, at the moment or if they were Abraham, saying Abraham's seed had ever been in bondage. But Abraham's seed had been in bondage. Have they forgotten about the past? Have they forgotten about being down in Egypt? Have they forgotten about how, how uh, uh, Jacob... And uh, uh, the 70 went down into Egypt and they came out, you know, and God led them through the wilderness and, the, and then into the promised land. They were in Egyptian bondage back then. And even now, even now as they're speaking, they are under Roman rule. You know, they're under the Roman dictates. They're, they're under the Roman law. And so they're really not truly free. And so they're saying, but we're Abraham's seed. Now you see how blind they are? They are being blinded by the truth. They're blinded to the truth. And Jesus goes on to say it. He says, he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. They were blinded to the fact that he was the son of God and he was there to deliver them. They should, be, they should recognize that he is the one that they should have been looking for all this time. But yet they were blinded to that fact. They were blinded to the truth. And he said, If the Son therefore make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He said, I know that you, the genealogy. I know your ancestry. I know that physically you are Abraham's seed. But ye seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. Now you see what he's doing? Friends, he's showing them that what they are really doing is they are showing that they're blinded to the truth. They're snow blinded. They're blinded to the knowledge of the truth and thus they can't really see it. 
because they have allowed themselves to be blinded by some other things. Friends, are you snow blind? Are you blinded by the truth or blinded to the truth? Blinded by something where you just cannot see the truth at all? You know, the Bible warns about being blinded. It warns about being blinded. And the one who does the blinding is the devil. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 1 through 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> Paul says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of, the, uh, of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. All right, so we're, we're, we're not handling the word of God in a manner that, that's going to be dishonest. He says not handling it dece uh, deceitfully, uh, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every, <clears throat> now watch it, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. All right? So we're not, we're not trying to trick anybody, not trying to deceive anybody. Now what is he going to say? Verse 3, he goes on to say, he says, But if our gospel be hid, he said, we're not trying to hide it, we're being open about it. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid from them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, <clears throat> excuse me, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. What has Satan done? He's blinded their minds where they can't see the truth. Now, friends, I want you to recognize something. I want you to know that, that we are trying to help you to focus on the truth and take off the blinders. Israel, God's people that were that were uh, chosen by him to bring them assigned to the world, had been blinded by something. They were blinded actually by the Old Testament. They were blinded by the law of Moses to the point that if you read through the book of Acts, and which, by the way, we're studying the book of Acts on, on Sunday mornings, and we encourage you to uh, come out and, and study the Bible with us. But if you go through the book of Acts, and really all through the Bible, the book of Galatians, the book of Romans, you're seeing the constant theme, and that is that these Jews, who said, we have Abraham's seed, they were blinded. They were blinded to the truth that was right in front of them because they were so wrapped up in the fact that, well, we are of a particular nation and therefore we are special to God and therefore we are, uh, we are, we are right. Now, there's a, people who, a lot of people who are blinded just like that today. In our class tonight, we were discussing the fact that there was a, <clears throat> um, one of the churches in Danville I believe it was a tabernacle. Who's it? Mooneyham? Yeah. Mark? Lamar Mooneyham. Uh, Lamar what's, it, what, what's the name of his church? Tabernacle. tabernacle. Doesn't, doesn't really matter what the name of it is. It's not in the Bible. But uh, uh, they, they sent, sent like 170,000, 70, a whole a lot of money over to Israel. You know why? Because they are blinded to the truth about what Israel is all about and who Israel really is. Israel today is not a physical nation over there. They're not the ones that God's looking for the, uh, or God, that, that are waiting for God. The, Israel today is a spiritual Israel. Romans 2, verses 28 and 29. Now, that's not really what I'm uh, going to be discussing tonight, but I just want to uh, uh, bring this up. Notice this, Romans chapter 2 and verse 28, just to show you that the most important thing about uh, Judaism today is not a physical Israel. Paul said, for he is, a, he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and all the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. So the, don't be blinded to the truth <clears throat> by thinking that God's people, God's special people are Israel over here in the Middle East that are being threatened by Iran and Iraq and Syria and, and whoever else. Don't, don't we think that they're God's chosen people because they are not God's chosen people today. They were at one point to bring the Christ. But Christ has come and they rejected him. And now 
Gentiles get to be partakers of a promise that God made to all mankind. All right? The promise he made to Abraham was, In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis 22, verse 18. So don't be blind to the truth, but here's what we're talking about. We want, I want to show you that these, these Jews were so blinded to the truth that even when they read the law, when they read the message that was telling them about the Messiah, that was, that was actually being given to bring them to Christ, they still couldn't see it. Look at this. Let's just look for a minute before we go to uh, another verse here, uh, another slide. Let's, uh, let's just look at this. In uh, Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. I want you to know something. The law that God gave, the law of Moses, was only added until a certain time. Galatians 3, 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. What promise? The promise of eternal life, the promise of salvation, the promise of being justified by faith through Christ. He says that promise was made. He said not to seeds as of many, but unto one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So he said the promise that all nations will be blessed in your seed was not made to a whole lot of people, but just to one. That was Christ. And he says, what's this? Verse, uh, verse 19, he says, uh, Now, wherefore then serve the law? Why, why then did God give the law? He says it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. What seed? Who is the seed? Christ. What was the promise? That all nations be blessed. So when Christ came and became the promise of blessing of all nations, then the covenant, the law of Moses, was going to be finished. All right? It was added till. It was added till. Now, friends, that is very important. Because if you don't understand the purpose of the law of Moses, you won't, you'll be blinded by the truth. You'll think that, well, here's the law of Moses still in effect, and you're going to be blinded by it, not recognizing that it was only added till Christ came. All right? So it was added till the seed should come to him promised way. That's Christ. But the Jews, now, now I want you to see how powerful uh, blindness is, being blinded to the truth can be. Because as I said, the Jews read the law of Moses every Sabbath. They went to the synagogues when they were carried off into captivity. When they were carried off into captivity, the, the, uh, the Assyrians came and destroyed the northern kingdom in 721 B.C., and then they carried away the southern kingdom, Judah, in 586 B.C. When the first carrying away took place, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians came in, carried them away, and it was during this time that the synagogue worship was set up. The Jews couldn't get back to Jerusalem and worship, so they, they, they established synagogues. And the synagogues are where the, the law was read every Sabbath. But now notice what Paul is saying because he's showing. Stay with me here. His whole point is showing that the Jews were blinded by the law so much that they could not see the truth. Now look at this. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12, look what he says. He says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Now, that sounds almost like what he was saying uh, in, in the previous verse, chapter 4, uh, the previous verse we read. He says, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, now not, he's going to use, a, he's going to use an analogy here. He says, not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look, to the end of that which is abolished. Now, when did Moses put a veil on his face, friends? Some of you back home are answering. I can almost hear you say it. Yeah, when he came down off Mount Sinai with the, with the Ten Commandments. He came down off the mountain. His face shone to the point that the children of Israel were afraid to look at him, so he put a veil over his face. And he's saying, look, the, Isra uh, the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. So he's using a comparison here. Moses put a veil over his face so the children of Israel wouldn't be afraid, and that is just like the veil that's over their face now. They can't see the end of the law of Moses. They can't see that it was going to be abolished. He says, but their minds were blinded. 
their minds were blinded, for until this very day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. It's just like they have a veil over their face and all they're reading is the Old Testament, but they're not seeing the end of it. They're not seeing that it was to be abolished. They're not seeing that it was only for a certain period of time till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And so Paul says that when they read the law of Moses to this day, they still have a veil over their eyes just like the veil that was on Moses' face. So they couldn't see the same veil untaken away in the reading of the law uh, uh, of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So there's a veil. Look at this. He says the veil remains. Their, their minds were blinded because there was a veil. Now, friends, there's they're snow blindness. I'm saying they're blinded to the knowledge they're, they've got knowledge, they've got information right in front of them, but they're so blinded to it, they can't see it. They refuse to see it. They don't want to see it. Or maybe, they, or, or, or maybe they just haven't been taught, but for whatever reason, they're blinded to everything else that's going around them, everything else that God is providing for them, because all they're doing, they have tunnel vision focused only upon the law of Moses. Now, friends, that's very important that we understand this. Because a lot of people today are just like these children of Israel. A lot of people today are just like this, not necessarily blinded by the law of Moses, which although many of them are, they think that we need to get our authority from the law of Moses. And, you know, if we're going to have instrumental music and tithing and all that stuff, it's in the Old Testament. Well, they're blinded by the Old Testament. But friends, you need to realize you may be blinded and missing something because you're only focused on a certain thing, you may be missing a whole lot. You know, one of the things that one of the things that that police officers would tell you when they're when they're going in to clear a room, if there's a suspect or someone that they're going through the house, it's dangerous to have tunnel vision. It's dangerous to be focused on so focused on something that's right in front of you that you don't see what's going on around you. Same with driving a car; you have to be always aware about what's going on around you. And a lot of people are focused so focused on one thing that they fail to see, truth that's all around them. Now, that's snow blindness. So blinded that they're blinded to the truth. Now, how can people be blinded to the truth? Someone said, well, you know, how, how is it that you're saying that they're blinded to the truth? What do you mean they can't see it? Friends, have you ever heard the saying, can't see the forest for the trees? Sometimes people get so close to something so close to something that they just can't see the big picture. Or maybe they're so close to something that they don't want to see anything else because if they back up, then they're going to see that they're wrong or they're going to see that they have to make some changes or they're going to see that mom and daddy were wrong or they're going to see that, you know what, I'm going to have to, uh, I've got a whole lot of uh, another direction to go in. Now there's where the Jews were. They were blinded by the law of Moses. They didn't want to give that up. Do you think that, do you think that the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, before he was the Apostle Paul, do you think he wanted to give up the law of Moses? Why, certainly not. Why, certainly not. This was a man that the Bible says in Acts uh, 26. Notice this. Here was a man that when Paul is, 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 is talking, you notice he says this. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. And he says, uh, uh, especially because I know that thou be the expert in customs and questions which be among the Jews wherever I will see thee and hear thee patiently. Um, uh, uh, my manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation in Israel, know all the Jews. Look what he's saying. He said, look, everybody knows what kind of person I was. They know my background. They know, they know what kind of individual I was. Later on, he's going to say in Galatians chapter 1, Galatians 1 and verse 13, notice what it says here. He says, ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Now, why was he doing that? 
because he was looking at the law of Moses and said, this is how zealous I need to be. Listen, Jews were very zealous about the law of Moses. Saul of Tarsus was a good example of that. He was ready to kill somebody. He did kill people. He killed people just because, or all because uh, they were teaching uh, something that he thought was contrary. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to move that. He, he said, look, I'm, I'm ready to kill somebody. He said, I put, I put them to death. When I, when I uh, accused people, when I accused people, he said, uh, I, I gave my voice against them. No, it says, he said, uh, 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 which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that at the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. He said, look, I, he said, there was nobody, there was nobody that was more zealous for the law than I was. Now, what do you think, what do you think it took for Saul of Tarsus to realize, boy, I need to, I want to back up, I'm going to change here. It took him seeing meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. And then he realized, and he says in Galatians chapter 1, he said, when I saw the heavenly vision, he said, uh, 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 when I saw this, uh, notice this in verse uh, 17. He says, neither went I up to Jerusalem, to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. He said, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. Verse 16. He said, uh, I immediately, I immediately obeyed. Now, he was blinded by the law of Moses. He didn't want to see it, but you know when he backed up and he saw the truth, he immediately obeyed it. Friends, I hope that you're not snow blinded. I hope you're not blinded to the knowledge that's right in front of you. I hope you're not blinded to the uh, uh bountiful evidence that's being put forth to you uh, by, by members of the Church of Christ. hope you don't take that for granted and say, well, I'm not going to listen to it. I was listening to Mark and Michael last, uh, uh, last week, and they were talking about the, we were talk, they were talking about the, the number of Bible classes that you could participate in that was easy, within easy driving distance. I mean, from, from Regional to Danville, it's what, 30 minutes? 35 minutes from here, from here to, to Martinsville, if you're in Regional, Regional to Martinsville, 40, maybe 45 minutes to get to the building. Less than an hour. Less than an hour. From Regional to Eden, 20 minutes. You know, maybe 25. It's, it's 29 miles. It's just 29 miles from here to the building in Martinsville, friends. That's all. 29 miles. And, and then when you have Bible classes that are offered on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, TV program that's offered on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, Tuesday nights, uh, you can, you can uh, uh, pick a place to come and study the Bible with us on Sunday morning, Danville, Martinsville, Eden, Reedsville. You know, there's a, bount, there's a bunch, of evidence, bunch of information available to you. Now, I hope that you're not being so blinded to it that you're saying, you know what, I'm not even going to investigate. Now, that's who the Jews were, all right? Now, don't be so blind. All right, I'm going to take this phone call before we get into the rest of our lesson. You're on a work from the Lord. You're on a work from the Lord. Are you there, caller? All right. <clears throat> now, Here's what I'm saying about being blinded. Friends, do you, have you ever stopped to think that you might be like the Jews were, so blinded and bound to what your father said that you just can't see the truth? Listen to what this gentleman says. Now, this is, this is kind of one from the, uh, this kind of throwback Thursday, I guess you might say. But listen to what this man says, all right? Listen to what this man says. You're on the word from the Lord. Oh, uh, yes. I, I just turned on and been watching you 
program a little bit. And uh, you're talking about all these the nominations and things. Yes, sir. We are not done. We know that nominations are not in the Bible. The Bi churches were named by our forefathers as far as Baptists or whatever you want to call different churches. I didn't say they were wrong. I just said well, are you in we one? know that they're not in the Bible. Are you in one? Don't keep saying that. Well, these denominations are not in the are, Bible. Are you we in know a, that. Are you in a denomination? Our forefathers named them, and that's why Sir. they got these names. We know they're well, not in okay. the Bible. Okay, okay. Uh, we know denomination not in the Bible. We, we're not dumb. We know our fathers named them. Now, friends, can you see that? You see, I, I'm saying the individuals like this, like this gentleman are so close, so close to what their, their mamas and their daddies have taught them that they don't even hear themselves talking. We know it's not in the Bible. Our mom and daddies, our daddies named them. Well, hello, friend. Would, would you listen to yourself, please? Listen to what you're saying. We know it's not in the Bible, and but we know that our daddies named it. Well, friends, does that not concern you that you're in a religion, number one, that you know, that you admit, admit is, number one, named by your father, and number two, not even in the Bible? See what I'm talking about? That's That's blind. That's blinded to the truth. That is that's being so close and so wound up in something that you're not even listening to yourself think or listening to what you're saying. Listen. Stop and listen. We know that it's, it's from our religion. That's what Paul was saying. Paul said, this is, this is our father's religion. This is my father's religion. That's what I'm bound up in. Do you notice, if you pay attention to what the apostle Paul said, when the Apostle Paul is going through his, uh, his, his life, he starts talking about our, our father's religion, my father's religion. But he changes it. It's, it's not his religion anymore. Or, or here's a better one. If you look at Stephen in Acts chapter 7, notice this, in Acts chapter 7, Stephen, Stephen is, is preaching <clears throat> to, the, to the Jews. And look what he says. If you go through a number of number times right here, he says, he says uh, men and brethren, fathers, the God of glory appeared unto our fathers, our father Abraham. And he goes through, and I forget how many times it is. It's all, I think it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot. In Acts 7, uh, he says, uh, I think I may have it counted here. In, in verse 7, he says, our father Abraham... Then look at verse, uh, let's look at verse 11. Let's look at verse 11. And notice what he says. He says, uh, Now there came a dearth all over the land of Egypt and, and uh, Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no uh, sustenance. In verse 12, so what they do, they go down uh, into Egypt, and he sent our fathers first. All right, and then verse uh, uh, 15, verse 15, he says, And Jacob went down to Egypt, and, died, and he died, and our fathers were carried over, our fathers. And then verse 19, he says it again, he says, The same dealt uh, subtly with our kindred, and evilly entreated our fathers. So he's saying our, 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 and notice this. And now, but notice, when he gets over here to, and he says it uh, several more times, verse 30, 38, our fathers, verse 39, our fathers, verse 44, our fathers, verse 45, our fathers, verse 46, actually 45, he says our fathers twice. But notice this, when he gets to, when he gets to verse 51, look what he says. He says, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye, as your fathers did. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? You know what? I don't want to have anything to do with that religion. He, Stephen is letting it be known without a shadow of a doubt that is not right. I am no longer in that camp. Now, friends... I'm really concerned about individuals that will come right out and say, 
our fathers, our fathers did this. It's not in the Bible, but our fathers did it. And you're going to defend it? Friends, to me, that's, that's being rather blinded. That's being rather blinded by, uh, blinded to the truth. And we know who does the blinding. It's the devil. The devil does the blinding in this matter. Now, are you really going to be blinded by something that your father said or did? You want to work from the Lord? Yes. Yeah, James. Yes, sir. Can you be saved in a denominational church and go to heaven? No, sir. The Bible says, let's look at the scripture here. The Bible says in Ephesians uh, 4 and verse 4, let's just stay with me here for a minute. Ephesians, okay. uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 4. Well, here we go. Ephesians 4 and verse 4. There is one body, all right? Now, that's important, one body. Now, we find out what the body is, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. He had put all, gave him to be head over all things and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. So the church and the body are the same thing. They belong to Christ, and he is, he's the head over the body or over the church. So church and the body are the same thing. There's only one of them, one kind. Now, Notice this in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, or the head of the body, and he's the savior of the body, or he's the savior of the church. So, if Jesus is going to be your savior, you have to be in the one body, or the one church. So if you're outside the one body, or outside the one church, there's no way you can be saved. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, basically, yeah, it does answer okay. the question. So basically, if I have been baptized in a denominational church and I think that I have been saved and will be going to heaven, uh, you might say the devil is fully wool over my eyes that's based exa- on what you just read. That's exactly right. That's exactly okay. right. That answers my question. Thank you a whole lot. All right, all right. Bye-bye. You want to work from the Lord? Yeah. Um, y'all were saying tonight you were talking about the law and not being under the law anymore. The law of Moses. What yes. about Matthew? Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. Okay. Now, you want to make your point there? Well, read it. It'll make its own point. The Bible. Think not I'm coming to destroy true. the law, the prophets. I'm not coming to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, I did, did, did I say anything about... Through chapter 20. Did, did, I, did I say... To All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did I say anything about destroying the law? No, I didn't. All right, so verily I say unto you, I'll read on. Till heaven and earth shall pass away, one jot or one tittle shall no, no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. All right, now that's all important. All has not been fulfilled. That's imp- I'm sorry? You think all has not been fulfilled. All the law has not been fulfilled? But the earth is destroyed, then all will be fulfilled. Jesus came to fulfill the law, is Jesus what he said. Come again. No. It will all be fulfilled. No, he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Jesus won't come again? He's going to come again, but it's already been fulfilled, sir. We just read. It we hasn't just read. Yet, it hasn't been fulfilled. All right, did you, did you hear the verse I read earlier in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 3? Let it read it to me again. All right, all right. Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse, I think, I think verse 14 is where we want here. Uh, uh, the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that law which is abolished. Now, he's talking about the law of Moses here. Now, the law of Moses was abolished. Now, what is abolished? The Ten Commandments is abolished? Yes. What does the law, what does abolished mean? Well, go back to 1 Corinthians. Uh, go no, back wait, no wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. I, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. You, no, you asked me to read a verse, and I read your okay. verse. Now, you answer my question about this verse. What does abolished mean? To do away with. 
All right. Oh. All right. So, so Jesus, Paul said that the law, the Old Testament, the law of Moses, has been abolished. Now look at this. Verse, verse 14, he says, For their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, now watch it, the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ? So why does Jesus say in Matthew, in his own words, that he doesn't come to do away with the commandment? He, he, he didn't say, he, he didn't say do away with. He didn't say do away with. He didn't say, sir, he did not say do away with. He said, think not that I come to destroy. He's, the, no. And if you read on 17 through 20, it, it says that he, whoever teaches not to follow the commandments will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, now say it again. Read the whole thing. Go back to okay. Matthew. I, I did. I, I'm, through, I'm right here. This is where I picked up. Thing. This is where I left off. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so... He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So the commandment. But when Jesus... He can't break the commandment. Okay, now listen. Now, when Jesus said this, had he died yet? Had he died on the cross when he said this? Had uh -huh. Je well, I mean, he'd already come, though. Had he died on the cross? No. All right. He couldn't die on the cross because he's now, preaching it. Okay, all right. You, all right. You're right. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. In Colossians, we'll come back to this, in Colossians 2 in verse 14, what did Jesus do to the law of Moses on the cross? Uh, verse uh, verse uh, 14, Colossians 2, 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, which was against us, that's the law of Moses, contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So what Jesus did, sir, he fulfilled the law. He didn't destroy it. He just fulfilled it. He completed it. So the commandments still have to be followed. You can't. No, no, sir. Listen. No, listen. See what you don't understand. No, no, wait a minute now. What you don't understand, sir, is you don't understand that just because the law of Moses has been fulfilled doesn't mean that we still don't have a law to live under. It's just not the law of Moses. You see that? You, you know what, the, I, I may get these wrong, but do you know what the, uh, I believe it's the 18th uh, Amendment to the uh, Constitution says? It's, it's the law, it's a prohibition. It says you can't sell alcohol. Do you know what 21 says? 21 says that we yeah. repeal the 18th. Now, I may be wrong on, on the numbers here, but my point is the one that, reinstated the selling of alcohol nullified the Talk one that alcohol. said it's illegal. Now, is the, is the one that says it's illegal, is it still part of the, of, of the uh, uh, Constitution? Yes. I it should be. It, it sure is. It's still part of it. But you know what? It's just not in effect. It's just not in effect. And that's what the Law of Moses is like. The Law of Moses was a law that God put in place let me, let me read this verse to you, because I, I think we, you might have missed this one too. Galatians 3, 19. Look what Paul says. He says, Why, what, wherefore then serves the law? What's the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgression. Notice, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And the promise was made to Jesus, verse 16. God made a promise to Abraham and to Jesus. He said, not to many seeds, as of many, but to seed as a one, thy seed which is Christ. God made a promise to Abraham and Jesus. And then he says in verse 19, that the covenant, or the law was added, till Jesus came, to whom the promise was made. Now, if, if I tell you, if you put a scaffold on your house, till all the bricks are laid, what are you going to do with the scaffold once the bricks are done? I guess we just throw it away. Huh? No, well, you take it down. You take it down. I'll put it up later. 
You take it down. You don't uh, use the scaffold anymore. You don't use the law of Moses anymore as far as what you govern by. It has a purpose, sir, but you don't live under it anymore. We don't have to sacrifice animals at the temple like they did back in Moses' day. Because sir, are, are you telling me you want to live under the law of Moses? Sir, are you telling me you want, you want to live under the law of Moses? I don't have to live under the law of Moses. I don't have to sacrifice animals. I can, my sins are forgiven by Jesus. I don't have to try to live a perfect life. Okay, but sir, here's what, here's what you're right. missing here. You're, you're, sir, you're, you're telling me that you, want, that you want the Old Testament to be in place and you want Jesus. Okay, you can't, teach, you can't teach that it doesn't exist. I didn't say it didn't exist. I said it's no longer in effect. Now, now, isn't there a difference between no longer in effect and, and doesn't exist? That's, Jesus said, I didn't cool. come to destroy, I came to fulfill it. But you can't teach, you can, you also can't teach against the law. Sir, I'm not teaching against it. I'm teaching about it. I'm teaching what the proper role it has. Do you do you get your authority, your marching orders, your permission? Do you get it from the law of Moses? What do you get from the law of Moses? What do you use the law of Moses for? I use the law. I use the Ten Commandments. I go off the Ten Commandments. You do. You keep the Sabbath holy. I believe there's still. Yeah, he he didn't do away with those. Do you, do you work on the side? Do, do you work on Saturday? We sir, don't have to sacrifice anything anymore. Sir, do you work on Saturday? Yeah, I work every other Saturday, every other Sunday. So you don't keep the don't Sabbath. Right now, so you don't keep the Sabbath, sir. You tell me you keep the Ten Commandments, right, then turn around and tell me you violate the Sabbath. the Sabbath. I'm sorry. These worship sets aside a day for the Lord. You're saying that you keep the Ten Commandments and then turn around and say you violate the Sabbath. You work on the Sabbath day. Okay. Now, why is that? What about? Now, why are you? No, don't why about this. Why don't you answer my question? Why do you I say? I have to live a perfect life. I don't have to live a perfect life anymore. So, I so you, so you can, so you can violate the Ten Commandments because you don't have to live a perfect life. Well, you're saying I got my Bible. If I have my Bible, I was just wondering about that verse. And there's several other things I got questions on as far well, as Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to help you see oh, this, sir. I'm trying to help you see this. The law of Moses, the law of Moses was simply fulfilled. It could not do what you wanted to do. It could not do what I wanted to do, and that's for forgive sins. And in order for, in order for, in order for the, in order for us to have remission of sins possible today. The law of Moses has to be taken away so a new law could be put in place. You cannot have two laws that contradict each other running together. Jesus could not be a high priest under the law of Moses. And that's what I'm showing you in Galatians, Galatians 5 right here. Look at this. Paul says, Paul says, Christ is become of none effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. And that's what you're telling me. You're saying, well, I want to get back to the law of Moses. You can't have Jesus and the law of Moses. Jesus brought a new law, a better law. Why do you want to go back to the old law? I don't want to go back to the old law. Then why are you and trying to defend it? it? Why are you saying that you still want it? Why are you saying you still need it? You still you you read a if you read a book you read it from beginning to end so we don't skip the old testament. I'm not saying skip the old testament, sir. Sir, time. I'm not saying skip the old testament. Y'all, anything I said out the old testament, y'all totally sir, just. Sir, I'm not saying skip like the old testament. I'm not saying skip the old testament. I'm not saying skip the old testament. You're not listening. I use the old testament for it's for okay. what is what it's given for, for the purpose that it was designed for. But it's not what you get your marching orders from. It's not where you get your authority I don't, from. I don't, I, don't, I don't live by the Old Testament. The, you just said you did, sir. All right, sir. Now, stop. I understand all that. Sir, now, now, now we've caught you in a contradiction here. You're saying you don't use the Old Testament, but yet you keep the Ten Commandments. Now, how is that possible? I still, I still, I don't do away with the Ten Commandments. I didn't say I'd live. 
by the Ten Commandments. You don't do away with the old. Commandments. You don't do away with the Ten Commandments, but you don't live under. It's a, it's a, okay. It's a All right, sir. I'm live. running out of time. I'm running out of time, and I want to get halfway None through my us. lesson. I'm running out of time. None of us are capable of living that way. None of us. None of us live a life free of sin. I didn't say that. I don't know why you're saying that. All right. Thanks for your call. Uh, <clears throat> friends, there's a <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, never say anything about destroying the law. It's for a purpose. All right. Now I've only got four minutes, and so I'm really not going to. Uh, I really don't want to get into this. The next part, I may just save it for next week. Uh, but here's what we're talking about, friends. The law. While we're talking about this, while this gentleman's talking about that, let's go ahead and address this. Let me just say something, friends. The the idea about the law, the Old Testament, the Old Testament is no longer in effect. It cannot be in effect if you want Jesus and the New Testament. Let's look at this. In Hebrews, let's just go ahead and look uh, at, some, uh, at some verses here. In Hebrews, and we're going to look at first, uh, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter uh, <clears throat> 10 and verse 8. Hebrews 10, verse 8. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. What is the first? What is the first? It's the Old Testament. It's the law of Moses. He took away the first that he may establish the second. What's the second? The New Testament. Friends, you cannot have the Old Testament in effect in order, and, and then come around and establish the second because they're contrary to one another. And by that I simply mean they're contrary to the fact that you cannot have Jesus as a high priest because he's from the wrong tribe. See, look, the Old Testament says... The Old Testament says, Hebrews 12, uh, 7, in verse 12, notice this. You cannot have Jesus as a high priest. Verse 11, uh, 7, 11, Hebrews 7, 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. All right? So the Levitical priesthood was under the law of Moses. He says, if that perfection came under that priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise at the order of Melchizedek. Why do you need another priest? That's of a different order. This is the Levitical order. Why do you need another priest to rise? If this was okay, if the law of Moses and the Levitical priesthood was fine, why do you need another one to rise up? He said, but look at verse 12. He said, for the priesthood being changed, the Levitic, Levitical priesthood changed, there is made of necessity a change also the law. So now the law changed. Didn't say that the Old Testament was destroyed. Didn't say we ripped it out and burned it and overlooked it and whatever the other man said. He didn't do that. He said, For he of whom these things were spoken uh, pertaineth to another tribe. Jesus came from another tribe of which no man gave attendance to the altar. Nobody from the tribe of Judah ever uh, uh, served at the altar. Just never did. Everybody was from the tribe of Levi. But Jesus is from another tribe. It's evident our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. So if Jesus is going to be a high priest, he's going to have to, the law is going to change. There's going to be a law change that says, you know what? We need a priest from Judah. Or someone from Judah can be a priest. You've got to change the law for that to happen. For it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made, notice this, who is made not after the law. Not, he's not made after a law, uh, uh, a carnal commandment, but after the power of, his in, of an endless life. Jesus is a priest of a different order. Now, if you want to say, well, the law of Moses is in effect, you can't have Jesus as a high priest. You just can't do it. He'd violate the law, okay? 
Uh, I, I'm out of time. Caller, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I've got about 30 seconds. And so uh, I, I appreciate it. We may continue this thought next week. And uh, uh, maybe I can get through the rest of my lesson here. But, uh, friends, I hope you see it's, it's very important that you're not blinded, so blinded by things like the law of Moses is still in effect. You miss a, you miss a whole lot when you think that the law of Moses is still in effect. And it's even worse when you say the law of Moses is in effect and you don't keep it. All right? Friends, if we can help you, we want to do that very thing. We want you to, to know we uh, uh, look forward to seeing you in any of our Bible studies. We hope, to, hope to, you come out and visit with us, 250 Boulevard, Sundays at 9 and 10, Thursdays at 7. And always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. You can also call 434-432-7931, but take a good look. If you recognize this man, you purchased any items from him at a flea market in the Danville, Pennsylvania County area. His name is Raymond Ray Hackett. He's from Ringgold, Virginia. If you know anything about him, you've purchased any items from him, you're asked to contact the Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Office. You can also contact Pennsylvania County Crime Stoppers. They have a toll-free number. That's 1-800-791-0044. That's 1-800-791-0044. If you have any information that can help out, please contact authorities. Now, that's not all of the news we have. As I mentioned to you just a few moments ago, we have a lot more coming up for you in the next little bit. In news from Rockingham County, thieves hit two Ruffin area homes on Wednesday, and we're just getting information in from the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office that a sex offender has received over 82 months in prison for failing to notify the sheriff.